In this episode, I'm going to be talking about damp on a house wall. So you'll see in the far corner there where all the pipes go. This is what it looks like. So we've taken the slabs up. We will be replacing the slabs as part of my small home studio build. But the old building, you'll see here where all that moss is growing on the wall. That's where the slabs used to put up against the weather lower two slabs you can see which are a darker color than the upper shade that's what's being dug out so in this episode i'm going to explain how i asked the builders to fix this and what the plan is so i've got some builders in there will be a damp layer in each house every house has this lead or plastic layer what happens is when they build a wall they actually put a layer of uh, lead down or tiles or plastic that stops the moisture from the ground coming up and going into your walls of your house so during this section of the build while the building of my extension is taking place i told the builders my existing old house has problems with damp we need to fix that by first lowering the slabs in my garden to lower 150 mil a meter below the damp proof layer um, because all the drainage and the pipes would be affected as those would all need to be lowered as well as the soil pipe there you can see the black one uh, we did a workaround the workaround was to create a new type of damp proof layer which would help stop moisture from the ground going up into the walls so the first prong with this is a thin well not thin but a plastic layer this is a waterproof plastic sheet you can get this in big rolls from big box shops they basically tack that up against the wall so there's like you can see plastic all the way around that wall now i'll explain how this helps you and what this can do and also i'll give you a progress update this time next year so you can see how well it does over winter in the uk we got a lot we get a lot of rain so that rain butts up against the walls if that wall is has a damp proof layer you basically have a better quality brick which comes below the damp proof layer so the water can just funnel away into the gutter what they're using here is the plastic sheet on the wall tacked in place they've got a screed which is now this is sand and cement mix in the bottom so they're creating a new concrete uh area basically for water not to pass into the building he put a bit of water in into that concrete and that plastic was sitting there he then gets a roof slates and pushes them up against the building the, the theory behind this is if water is passing on this patio it butts up against the slate and that channels it down into the drain and also it stops any sitting water being sucked up by the old bricks so the home bricks old house bricks are designed to basically suck up a lot of water so now what we're doing here is we're fixing this up because you'll notice our builder extension and this is like an update as part of my extension because they did the drainage for my extension as i have a little washroom in my extension but as part of that they redid the drainage they did the slabs again i asked them to raise all the slabs and reset these slabs up and also when your builders are doing this make sure i ask them to specifically put down a plastic sheet then spread out some sand and then put the paving blocks on top of that the reason for this is it stops weeds from growing from the ground through your slabs or your patio cracks and the gaps it's very important to do this at this stage a lot of builders will skip this stage and what they will do is put your slabs down on a little bit of sand on top of the ground without the plastic sheet being present what that means uh, weeds over time will go from the below ground and pass through however in this situation now that we have a plastic sheet nothing can grow be from underneath the ground through the gaps. anything that grows will only be in the cracks of the cement from the slabs where they join up so if you watched my other episode where i showed you how to brush sand cement mix into the gaps which stops uh, moss and weeds from going in the gaps that is a, a big step and it helps a lot so now you'll see the old wall along my house old house is now having a specific plastic layer which is higher than the slabs it's got a tile layer and now they're cutting the slabs and butting them up against the tiles which now means any rainwater that flows will not be in direct contact with the wall which stops the wall from sucking up that moisture 
So inside your house, if your walls have got a lot of uh, moisture or there's damp or there's spots of mold, have a look outside. See if you have water butting up against your wall. Is your wall bricks, are your wall bricks cold or wet on the outside? Do you have drainage from your rainwater? Is water overflowing from the drain and hitting the wall? And is that sucking up water? There's a number of things to do. All you want to do is carefully look on the outside of the wall of where the damp is taking place and study where water can sit up against your wall and see where and why your walls are wet. So you'll notice we lifted up our old slabs here and we saved them. And now they're basically cutting those down and fitting those here to give us a nice flush fit. So it's think of it like a tiling in your bathroom. If you spill water in your bath and the tiles are there, it basically runs down the tiles and they're not going to be sucked up by the floor. This is the same sort of scenario, but we're just making sure that any water that comes does not hit those bricks. Now you see that nice little slate layer. And these are the paving blocks that are just being cleaned up and re-put down. So you'll see a few more updates on my build of my extension, the new house. But where possible, if you do this, you'll see now we will have a butt joint against that tile. Uh, that's the extension for the neighbor. So they've already done the damp proof course and that is above our slabs. If your slabs are covering the damp proof, that's where your issues will be. And then you'll see I did the same thing like I showed you my other video, which has worked on my other house as well. We're basically sanding, sanding. We're brushing in sand and cement in the gaps. It will keep dropping in, but carry on doing that. The idea here is the sand and cement will create a... Uh, a thin layer within the gap which is only really thin anyway and this sits there stopping any water going through the gap as well as stopping any weeds or seeds that birds fly around and drop stuff from going into those gaps and then growing into weeds this eliminates the need for having uh, any gaps and you'll see they did a little bit of cementing around the drain pipe and this is sand here and the the drains the gutters the gullies have been fixed there's a little bit of driveway drain there because i left the long pathway as a slope so all of this joins onto this long pathway which is about 12 to 13 slabs wrong. That's two foot slabs each. And the extension is the, on the left hand side. You see the new building. That's what the extension is. The drainage will be added on that, which you saw on the previous episode. And if you're not already following this series, you can see how my extension went. But here, just for damp and finding out how to stop damp on your house walls, this episode is basically just like an overall main issue that happens water from the ground puddles in a specific location it butts up against your wall the wall sucks up that water and over time because the bricks are so wet and they're breathing with a hot and cold air and if you have cavity walls they basically condense and then that creates the ideal environment for mold so you'll see the slabs in the bottom section there because we still have a little mini garden left there because of obviously we've made a massive extension in our garden we're close to seven meters uh, long by three meters wide and all those slabs are basically just uh, creating a waterproof area everything's nicely set up and it's all laid down and the sand has been corrected what they're doing right now is any gaps along the side they're filling with cement and sand a wet mix to fill the gaps up so all the water should flow into a uh, the side which then flows down the tiles into the gutter but ideally it should be sloped anyway towards where your driveway or your gutter is and because we have two now we have a gully we have a long system here now. You'll see they're digging this up to create a slope. So all the water runs in one direction where it can be caught and go into your drainage. And you need to make sure your drains are kept clean. So every now and again, lift the lid up, get a big yellow glove and just put your hand down there and clean out and make sure that there's not any overflowing taking place because the main reason of damp is water sitting along your wall is being sucked up especially with our older houses the bricks are slightly different so you'll see here you use a spade to basically lower this out and then he's going to put a nice big plastic sheet they're not that expensive you can get see this thing there you get a big roll of it you can just uh, cut it to size you put it on the floor and then that helps you to make sure that uh, it all comes through and that will help to keep the uh, water away from the wall and you'll see that plastic sheet is on the floor now and then we'll put the sand on top of this 
which will help to uh, give you a bed for the slab to sit on. So about an inch and a half of that. You see there's a driveway got on the bottom, which is already designed to allow all the water from the slope to go down, go into the gutter, and then go into the drainage system. We don't want water sitting anywhere. So overall, this is impacting old buildings, new buildings, every buildings can can have issues. So you'll see now they put the bed of sand down, which is like a screech. A screech is a mix of small stones and building sand and like a bit uh, more grainy. Think of it like sand, but with like stones in. And um, that basically when cemented, it has more strength because when the cement holds the stones together in the sand and the sand, you get a stronger mix and it's less likely to crack. So what they're doing here is laying down each slab on the sand mix, making sure it's sloped down and then dropping a little bit of cement. They don't need to do this, but they put a bit of cement in just to create a little bit of bondage between the slab and the floor to stop it uh, wheezing about. And then they cut extra bits out from the sides and put those along the gap on the wall. So if you have a nice system like this, it will make sure you don't have any damage issues as well as uh, block paving in a way so if you're obviously using it like this access path you don't get muddy you don't get water standing there causing any problems so overall this is like a, a part of my episode of me building my extension and explaining to you uh, it's like a garden room office and this is part of that so we're putting the slabs in and i will be having further episodes where we we'll actually look at how we built a wooden shed at the end of our garden as well as the shower room is left as well let me quickly show you the sand situation you see here we've got big ton bags of this sand and screech and this was used inside our extension on the floor as well to make like a thin layer on the floor you can see if you squish the sand see this if you carry on squishing there's little bits of like stones in there they're not massive but they're big enough to create bondage when it cements together and depending on when you order it from the company it can look slightly different that's this is the first bag you'll see look it looks a bit more stony than the second bag but it just means the ratio of cement uh, not cement a uh, screech they use so overall we got two big ton bags and those were enough for the indoor and the outdoor this is a quick look at the cement and the slabbing so you'll see now this is below the footstep of the, the main entrance. That's the sun on the floor and it worked quite nicely. All they do now is going to fill up the ends on the sides with the cut slabs. If you have a big diamond cutting blade, you can just fill up the sand cement and that will help you. Make sure if you're not following already and you're interested in building type stuff, I've done my extension build, which is this, uh, this makes up that... Uh, play this basically so i'll link you to a video at the end i'll just let you watch the remainder of this uh, small extension uh, build and the patio being laid with the slabs it's quite uh, interesting seeing all this take place and i'll see you on the next video